Knights of the Round is a fantastic beat em up. Capcom released it in the arcades in 1991, and then it was ported to the Super Nintendo in 1994. There were some understandable changes made to it, because that's just how things had to be done back then. In some ways, the game reminds me of Golden Axe, mostly because of the fantasy setting, the three playable characters, and the fact that it's a really awesome beat-em-up. There is a story in this game. It really isn't all that involved because it doesn't have to be. I don't think anyone plays beat 'em ups for their story. Maybe they do now, but definitely not back in the 90s. The story gives you a vague idea of who these people are, just in case you had no idea who King Arthur was, or Lancelot, or Percival. Which is understandable for Percival. I would not have known him. Really at all. <laughs> So Arthur is trying to become the king of Britain. He is sent on a mission by Merlin, and he's joined by Lancelot and Percival. They are trying to defeat the evil king, Garibaldi, who just happens to be a wizard, because of course he does. It's nice that this is Arthur's early years, like he's just gotten Excalibur and hasn't united Britain yet. It's pretty fun. This is a standard side-scrolling beat-em-up. You move to the right, the screen locks until you defeat all of your enemies, the stages are relatively short. That's pretty much what you should expect. It's an excellent game with many similarities to other beat-em-ups from the late 1980s and early 1990s. You've got three playable characters, each of them has their own strengths and weaknesses. You've got Arthur, who's the most most well-rounded, Lancelot, who's the fastest character, and Percival, who is the strongest. Capcom gave you a lot of continues for this game, which is really nice. Each continue gives you two lives, and once those, can, once those lives are gone, then you can swap to a different character. It's kind of nice. I like that. Pretty much every beat-em-up does it, for the most part. I, don't, I can't think of one that doesn't let you swap between characters, but I'm sure there's one out there that I just haven't played yet. And have most likely just ignored. (laughs) But there's probably one that does it like that. The controls are very simple. You've got the jump, attack, defend, and then you've got a special attack. This is a little bit more grounded than some beat-em-ups. Your special attack really isn't all that crazy. It's just a super-powered version of what your normal attack would be. So you're not, like, casting fire magic, you're not calling in an airstrike or something like that. It's just you swinging your weapon a little bit harder. That's fine. It, it's not really great, but it's better than nothing. Like other beat-em-ups, it's going to take a little bit of your health when you use your special attack, which is really annoying, and I wish they hadn't done that, but every other beat-em-up was doing it. I wish they had just given you like a limit, like three special attacks per level or something like that. That would have been much better. The game is two-player, which is a change from the arcade, because the arcade was three-player. But you would have had to have bought the multi-tap for the Super Nintendo, and I really don't know how many people actually had the multi-tap. I did, but but that's not really a good measuring stick for how many other people owned it. One thing I didn't know when I was playing this is that it is possible to just tire the enemies out. You see this when you're attacking them. After they get up, they might be breathing heavy. That's actually a stun mode for them. You can also achieve this by just defending and letting them kind of punch themselves out. I didn't know about that at the time. I had to look that one up later on. So that was kind of cool. It probably would have changed the way I was playing, but eh, whatever. I like the gameplay an awful lot. It isn't really a challenging game, but it does ramp up in difficulty as you go along, which is understandable. It's pretty good, and I think it does a decent job of separating itself from a pretty crowded field of beat-em-ups. One thing I forgot to mention, and uh, 
I should go back, but we can just add it in here. You level up as you go throughout this game. So that's pretty awesome. When you die, your next character is again at the same level. So if you died at level 4 and then switched from Arthur to Lancelot, you're still at level 4. And that's pretty awesome. So this game looks really good. Uh, to kind of loop into the leveling system, you gain more armor, or your character sprite gains more armor. And that's pretty awesome. So you level up and your character looks a lot different. That's pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. Some of the enemies are palette swaps, which is pretty understandable for a game from this era. A lot of beat-em-ups did that, so I can't really knock Knights of the Round for doing the same thing. The enemies look really good. They all, in theory, look like knights, or at least uh, characters from a comic book that would be inspired by high fantasy, or something along those lines. When you run into a boss, they have like these big sprites, they look very menacing, and that's pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. It's very easy to see just what things are destructible in this. So you'll have barrels that you can break in order to get life, or find more points. The points actually matter in this. They are the way that you get leveled up is by getting more points in the game, so that's pretty great. Uh, there really are like no weak points that need to be shown off. Uh, the enemies have patterns that are pretty easy to follow. It's just a really fun beat em up Capcom did an excellent job with this. I do want to mention this really quick. If you want to see what the arcade game looked like, you can either go online, look up videos for it, or you can get the Capcom beat em up bundle, as this game was included in that. It's pretty awesome, and it you know, is a nice way of getting around the inflated prices of the Super Nintendo games. Knights of the Round has beautiful graphics, great controls, and I think the story's kind of fun too. It's one of the best beat-em-ups on the Super Nintendo, and I wish I had played it earlier. I also wish that I had found a copy of the game way earlier, because it was probably cheaper back in the 90s than it is now. This was a really fun game to play. I had heard of it before, but really only played it on the Capcom beat 'em up bundle. I had never played it on the Super Nintendo before trying this. The first that I ever read about this game was in Pat Contry's Guide to the SNES Library. So, yeah, that was kind of fun. <laughs> there are so many games just on these retro systems that I had never heard of and just never played before. It really is a lot of fun when I find something like this, and it's just really awesome. Knights of the Round is a fantastic beat-em-up. If you're a fan of the genre and you want to play this game, I would pick up the beat-em-up bundle because that's just the easiest way to get a hold of it. You don't need to get any hardware. You don't need to emulate anything. You can just get the game and you know have a great time. And if you don't like it, then you can try one of the other five games on it. So, yeah, there's that. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.